journalers, my travelers, my planners, and everyone else in between. I'm HT Journals. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, coming to you straight from the page, from my journal, I'm giving you part two of reasons why you may hate working at your public school. So getting right into it, number five on the list is um, no separate bathrooms. And what I mean by that is they're not co-ed or anything, but the bathrooms, they're just literally, you share them with the students. And so the teachers and, you know, the faculty, they don't have their separate bathrooms to themselves. You're just all in there together. And, you know, I'm from the States. <laughs> I did work in the school for a little bit before moving to Korea. And we were always taught that you never want to put yourself in a compromising situation or just in a situation where things might look a little funny or suspect. And that would include being alone with a student, especially in places like the bathroom. Now, considering that this was socially acceptable to do that um, in this setting, I eventually had to, you know, come to terms with that. And that's something I got used to. But there were some things that came with you know, sharing a bathroom with your students that I just kind of just irked me after a while. You know, you want your privacy when you're handling your business. <laughs> and you don't really have that, especially when you have, you know, young students. It's kind of like, um, you know, you hear moms complaining how they don't have like any privacy, any space. There's a bathroom. The kids are at the ankles. The same exact thing. And I noticed that two situations would happen. The first would be um, a student would want to take that opportunity if they see me to have extra, you know, English practicing time. And, you know, that's all cool. I'm all for it. But, you know, in the bathroom, I just want to be in. I want to be out. I want to handle my business. I'm really not trying to, like, work right now, <laughs> even though I'm at work. Um, and I know that might sound messed up, but the reality of the situation is, you know, you really just there to handle your business. The second thing that would happen and, you know, I can laugh about it now. And even back then I would like laugh about it, but sometimes it was a little annoying. You know, kids are kids and so they're always playing or whatever. So especially things where you have the break um, where everyone goes to the bathroom just to hang out. And of course, you you have to go there because you have to go. <laughs> you have students um, playing around or whatever. And there was a situation one time where I'm in the bathroom, you know, handling my business. And these particular kids, they're going at it. And I guess Mi Jung got hit a little too hard by Hyoni. She wasn't expecting it. They knew I was in there, and then they want me to mediate from behind the stall. And it's funny because, you know, I found myself getting into, you know, mom mode. Tony, like, why'd you hit her? You want me to come out here? Hit her one more time and see what happened. I found myself doing that while I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> and again, I can laugh about it now, and sometimes I laughed about it then, but that wasn't all the time. So... Number six on my list of reasons why you might hate working at your public school is that you are literally left in the dark when it comes to certain things. And I don't mean things like, oh, there's a staff meeting and you feel you needed to be there to have an input on some of the decisions that's being made in the schools. That's not what I'm talking about <laughs> because I understood very well my position as a guest native English speaker there. Um, and so I knew that I wasn't here to be a part of that in depth when it comes to what's relating to the school. But I'm talking about things like um, holidays. <laughs> when will the school be open? When will it be closed? Everyone's leaving early, you know, stuff like that you would expect to know. Um, there might be an event and they want you to make a speech or something where you, of course, you can make the little speech, but you would feel more confident if you had the time to prepare what it is you were going to say. So you're not up there looking kind of crazy. And I have two examples of what I'm saying. 
Um, so the first example is one time I'm at the bad school, of course, and I'm in the English office. Uh, I believe I'm waiting for a class to start. Whatever it is, I have like some time. And all of a sudden, I hear alarms go off throughout the whole school. And I wait for a little bit because I'm like, you know, maybe I'll hear like something going on in the hallways that something is really an issue. But I don't hear anything. Um, but then also the alarms don't stop. And so I'm like, okay, let me go peek my head out to see what's going on. Peek my head out, trying to get some comfort in knowing, you know, no one else is panicking. But I don't receive that comfort because there's no one else in the hallways. There's no one else in the classrooms. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, shit. Like, what's, what's, where is everyone? So I'm walking down the hallway. I still don't see anybody after the second, third class. I walk down the steps, and right by the main door, the front entrance, I see the vice principal. And she sees me, she notices me walking up to her. And as I walk up to her, I notice, like, the whole school that out there on the front yard. And she kind of just, like, waves me off and tells me, like, oh, you know, okay, okay, like, you can go back upstairs. And I realized it was, like, a fire drill that they were having and nothing serious. But it would have been nice to know that a fire drill will be taking place so that I don't panic, I don't think something's wrong. The second thing that happened that kind of demonstrates this being left in the dark, and I, I'm sure that other people that worked in Korea can relate to um, this issue, is that, um, so in Korea, there's this thing where you can't work at a school for longer than five years. At the five-year mark, you have to go and change to another school. There are exceptions. Um, at my good school, we had this really dope teacher, and he had been there for more than five years. But, you know, nobody was telling him anything, and he didn't leave. And so that's just what it was. But I didn't know that then. So I'm at the bad school, and... Um, we had just come back, I think, from some one of the breaks. It might have been Chinese New Year. Or, yeah, probably Chinese New Year. And I go back to school. Um, I go down to the office, and I'm noticing, like, I'm seeing new faces and just a little weird. So, you know, I'm still saying hello and everything. But then finally, there was one person who I did see, and um, that was the person that I remember from before the vacation, and they explained to me as best as they could that, you know, teachers change after five years. And that it dawned on me like, oh, okay, so I guess everyone came in at the same time and so they had to leave at the same time. But also that nobody had bothered to say bye. <laughs> like no one. Like I had a whole new co-teacher and everything. She didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> and mind you, I'm still kind of new at this point. Um, at this point I was doing, uh, pay into the $50 month thing, whatever, to pay for activities and other things that we were doing. I was going to dinner with them at this point. I was playing the stupid volleyball and all, and all these things. And no one even bothered to be like, oh, hey, you know, it was nice working with you these last few weeks, but I'm leaving now. Or And I got that lesson really early on when it came to relationships with people in Korea that you might be cool with someone and things might be going great but they might just ghost you and that's just the way things are Number seven school lunches and now bad school was bad school and for the most part every sense of the word the staff was you know difficult to deal with my students they actually were better to manage um, than the staff, but the food was just horrible. And if you remember from my last video when I was talking about um, doing things with the group and then how you're looked at when you stop doing things with the group, you're kind of outcasted from them because you're not doing what the rest of them are doing. I had already at this point stopped um, paying into the faculty fee thing for the activities. I didn't play volleyball. I didn't go out to dinner with them. Considering all of that, I had to suck up eating the food because 
I didn't want anything else to happen <laughs> to me and my situation because I was now denying eating with them. Number eight, things are monotonous. And for me and my situation, that's just what it was at the bad school, of course. There, there was a textbook that comes with most public schools in their English class that you have to follow. And most of my teachers at the bad school, they didn't want to stray from that at all. Um, each time there was English class from that particular chapter, they only wanted to stay within a certain amount of pages and there wasn't room for me to go off and do other things or to bring other elements into the classroom. I did have to time in after school where it was completely my time to teach and do what I wanted and I also did have um, winter camp and summer camp to do exactly what I wanted to do um, and that did help a little bit but when it came to making sure that the students really understood and that the lesson was like penetrating deeply I, you know I can't say that that happened because I mean, some of them were getting it, some of them weren't get, were not getting it, and I felt that they could have had we approached the lesson a different way. But again, I understood my position there as a guest native English speaker, and there's certain things you can't fight. Now, I probably would be in Korea longer if I had a decent balance in my work environment, but I didn't. And after the two year mark, I just knew that I couldn't work there anymore because I just, it was just getting boring doing the same textbook. And even though I had the good school to fall back on, it was only two days and it wasn't enough. Had I, it was reversed and I worked at the good school three days and the bad school just two days, I think that would have been easier for me to tolerate the situation. But that wasn't the case, and I just couldn't tolerate it, so I had to leave my mess. Okay, JPT Nation, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed my reasons on why you might hate working at your public school in South Korea. Of course, those are just my reasons, and you might think that there are more. Um, you might also think that there should be fewer, and the ones that I listed um, aren't enough for you to really complain about. That's also okay. Is there anything missing from the list? Add your comments below and let me know what you would have added or what you would have taken away. See you next time.